Hi, my name is Reeve Kat, and I'm on a Zoom call with Mrs. Raquel Huddleston. She's a biology teacher at Benzie Central High School on Wednesday, May 20th, 2020, and we're just going to have a conversation about social distancing. You've been a teacher for so long, so like, what was the transition <laughs> to online learning like? <laughs> um, so at first, it was like pretty overwhelming. Um, you had to self-teach yourself, you know, how to do things. Um, virtually. Um, it wasn't that difficult and uh, it was kind of, I think one of the most overwhelming things was that I'm on all of these different um, educational boards and I receive all kinds of information and, and all of a sudden everyone was offering a tremendous amount of free items and I just felt that I could only pick and choose certain ones otherwise I would just overwhelm my students. So. Luckily, I was already set up in Google Classroom, which is an amazing platform. Um, so that transition was pretty easy. Um, the, <laughs> I think one of the, the hardest parts was not knowing like who you were able, like who was able to get to things. So it took a while to figure out like what students needed paper packets and couldn't get to online items. Um, so you're just like going forward and you're just doing the best you can and you're just hoping that out there in Menzie County, all the kids are getting what you're sending them. So, so I think that's um, really difficult. The first class that I taught online um, to you guys, to AP Bio, um, like just, I can't see you when I start lecturing and I can't get any feedback and I'm just talking. And um, it was really difficult because I'm constantly scanning the classroom and like looking for confused looks and looking for confirmation that what I'm saying is like sinking in. And it just was, um, it was just an unreal feeling after teaching so long to just have that feeling. In fact, I forgot to stop the recording and I just started bawling. And um, I had to go back in and edit it before I could send it out to kids that asked for it because it was just, it was not, not the way that I would like to teach. <laughs> so is there anything you wished you could have changed about how it was handled? Um, you know, I feel like everybody was just like, like we literally woke up Friday morning to find out that that was our last day with students and we didn't know if that was the last day for two weeks the last day of the year um and I, i've never felt anything like that of just like racing to the school and trying to put together a plan to get all my students into two two things that i had to pick like that morning and that was google classroom and khan academy um, and then my whole hour, my last 48 minutes with kids was just get, get out your, bring your phones to class, which you know me, I don't allow phones in my class. And it's like, get out your phones, get on these computers if you need them. But I need all of you to have access to these two things. And so, um, so I feel like everybody was just in that, like, just wake up and just do the best you could do. And, um, I don't know if, I mean, obviously we're at a disadvantage because we are in a school that's one-to-one -one and already set up and already, you know, doing that. So I think the transition for Benzie students and Benzie staff was, is much harder than schools that were already, you know, in kind of that one-to-one -one relationship and were using, able to use technology. I mean, I have to sign up for computers like so far in advance to be able to use technology where now we were like, you know, having to figure it out. And then you're like designing things for online, but then you have to give the same things for paper packet. Well, those two things are completely opposite. You're like creating videos, you're like, you're creating events online. How do you recreate that to send it home in a paper packet? So you're, you're doing two lessons for everything. So pretty much. So I don't think anybody can prepare you for that. I think everyone just, I'm so proud of our staff. I really, um, there's a lot of stress. Teachers are really stressed. Um, <laughs> we would, you know, I, like I said yesterday in um, one of our meetings, I will never complain about a snow day ever again. 
<laughs> I used to have heart attacks about snow days. So <laughs> we still managed to take the AP test. <laughs> I know, and I will never complain again. <laughs> I just remember that Friday being like, I was kind of just like relaxed about the whole thing. Like, you know, we're going to come back. It just feels kind of like a snow day, even though like, like they're having us clean out their locker, our lockers. That kind of just seems like an overreaction. I know. And I know. to watch, we stood there and just watched all of you walk. And I don't know if you noticed, but like the halls were dead quiet. Everybody's walking out with these huge plastic bags of all their stuff that they've accumulated since September. And it was just, it was eerie. It was like, you know, just all these kids just walking out, just silent. Cause no one, I mean, like there was just so many unknowns and, and something that even the adults can't like, even though I've been teaching forever, I can't, I don't have anything in my like repertoire <laughs> to like, I've never coped through something like this. So it wasn't like any of the adults could, you know, have any insight as to what this would look like, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> so your job's changed a lot, but how has it stayed, stayed the same? How has it stayed the same? Um, so first of all, it's changed. I think some of the changes I'm going to definitely benefit from. So I will continue to do many things. Um, there's some amazing resources out there that we haven't been privileged to. So um, even if I have to pay for them out of my pocket, I think I will continue with some of the tools that I've seen benefits from. Um, I'll never doubt the magic that a teacher has in a classroom. Like, like that was one of the first things I said to my staff to just try to cheer them up in that first week is like, if you've never realized how much magic you perform in that classroom, you now know, because you can't, we can't recreate that, like in this kind of like teaching environment, even though we're trying to, um, what was the other part of that? Just how Sorry. has it stayed the same? <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, grading. <laughs> There's so much grading. Um, one thing that's I I wasn't prepared for is that um, like I'm doing school from 6:30 a.m. till 11 p.m. Like there's no one is like going to school when they're supposed to. So. My questions from students and the things that they need do not start rolling on in until like 2 p.m. I've already been working since 6.30. And so then I'm like, it's just constant. There's like no shut off valve. Um, so that, but there's never shut off valve anyways as an educator, I feel, but it's, it's worse. <laughs> um, there's a lot more demand afterwards. Um, developing like systems to stay organized. Um, I mean, you're doing that constantly in the classroom. And I feel um, that the organization that I had in the classroom obviously doesn't work. I'm a hands-on, have to feel things. And now all my documents are in that computer. Um, <laughs> uh, I like grading concrete paper. So you're just staring at a computer and grading everything. So, so I think like there, you're, it's different, but it's the same thing. Does that make sense? like <laughs> like you have to be organized and you have to but it's like new it's a different organization that it requires so as a parent what was it like um so you know i i, I was thinking you know about that of like if this would have happened at different stages in my parenting because with four kids with you know each of those kids having seven different teachers, you know, um, I've, I've, those parents that are out there that are trying to work from home and they're trying to, um, you know, help kids like stay on task and do their work. Um, it's very different for me because my kids are college age. So I have two that are out um, and that has been very difficult, like, for my two that are out in the world dealing with this. So as a mom, it's been very stressful. Um, but then my two that were at home, like our, our I, this is the first time I've been able to use the den for, you know, anything is this week because Brayden had to have his computer and the home computer 
so that he had double screens and then he somehow had some screen going at Bradley University. I don't know how that worked, but um, so I was very, we are very blessed. I didn't realize that our internet was so good. Um, Bella would be on her classes from University of Northern Iowa in one room and Braden would be on his in the den and I would be on mine upstairs. And we were very, very fortunate to be able to do all of that at the same time. And I know that that's not, you know, it's just not possible everywhere in the county. So very lucky. Um, but proud of my kids, they like fought through. It was not, I mean, taking mechanical engineering classes and speech pathology classes online, not an easy thing. So I was very proud of them. They worked super hard, so. So what was your initial reaction to having to social distance? Um, well, initially I'm like, you're gonna make me stay in my house and I'm not, and I don't have to leave. Like I don't have to go anywhere. Um, this is what I dream about. Like just days of like not going anywhere. Um, so it was, so for me, because I'm just go, 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 like nonstop all the time it was kind of like who but then my body was like what are you doing like why are you sitting this hurts like i would like i was starting to get i don't know how people sit like i don't know how people do desk jobs like um it it was very um that it became very stressful then i realized i'm a people pleaser and it's really hard to please people when you are in your house so that's different. <laughs> um, but this, when, it, when we're out, like we, we didn't go, it's kind of weird, but we, so my daughter was, my oldest daughter was super ill, um, really, really ill. And um, they put her on medical leave. She's in RN um, down in Detroit. And this is like February, March. So she, we finally get her to come up here like March 24th to just like, to try to just help her like get through the rest of this illness. Her immune system numbers were down and she was struggling with some virus. Well, come to find out the virus was the coronavirus. Um, and she didn't know that till weeks later when she had antibody testing and tested positive for the antibodies. So when she came home, we were doing this social distancing inside the house because she didn't want to give us this virus. Um, so that was weird, um, just like not being able to just hug your kid <laughs> as soon as they drove in the driveway. Um, and uh, so we were social distancing inside the house and then she started to, you know, get better and stronger and then that stopped. But um, my grandma, like I feel like it's so different for so many people, like my grandma's all alone and, you know, like there's only two people that are allowed because of how they're like social distancing to go visit her. So we went and stood underneath her balcony and like talked to her and brought her flowers. And, um, and she's like, seems she's so strong. Like if I could be like anybody, it's my grandma, but she, um, but like, I just feel so bad for people that are like really socially isolated. Like I have people to talk to. And as you know, I talk to myself all the time. So <laughs> you can go outside. <laughs> I go outside. Outside has been, I've always loved outside. Now outside is just like my saving grace. Like, mm -hmm. even if I just go outside and just stand, I did that this morning, just stood outside. Just, I don't know, makes you feel free again. We just got a puppy and oh, yeah, that's yeah. fun. Yeah, it's we a drove great all, time to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. But we drove all the way. And anyway, but you know, he has to go outside like every hour or so because <laughs> otherwise he's going to go on the carpet. Right. So that's a great excuse to go outside. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, you'll spend, you'll spend like 12 hours a day inside and you won't even get dressed or anything. <laughs> but now if I don't have pants on, he'll just knit me. <laughs> <laughs> that was one thing I had to do. Like I had to get, stay in that routine. I have to get up. I have to work out. I have to like, um, do my poor hair that needs to be colored. I have to like, just like, I have to get into that or I don't, I didn't like who I was becoming if I didn't. So um, mm -hmm. that makes me feel normal. Well, you know, you say you, you get up at like 4 a.m. and work out on a normal school day, but 
I I am a night person, you know, like I, like I'll stay up to like 12, like doing homework and then another hour past that or two, just like drawing and just chilling out. Yeah. I'm out at like seven or 8 PM. <laughs> I have to get it done. Cause then otherwise I just don't find the time to do it. So that's the only time, but I do not miss that morning alarm. Like I am not getting up at four and 5 AM. Mm -mm. So I don't miss <laughs> If there's anything I've learned from watching people talk about their colleges online is that you don't sign up for 8 a.m. classes. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I, it was hilarious just like see here and a kid just race like to their computer because they'd gotten up two minutes before their class was starting. So yep. I'd hear brain just <laughs> room down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm not going to say anything specific. But <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that Benzie County is doing right now, with social distancing? Um, I guess like it isn't fair to like make any kind of assessment of that because I'm not out there and I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really sad that I'm not getting um, more feedback from students, more class assignments. Um, I mean, I, you know, I have like an AP college or, you know, a college class that I'm teaching and I watch my college kids like never miss a class. And then we never had all 31 kids in class. And that just, it's just heartbreaking. Like it's hard not to take that personal, personally, but I get it. I try to get it. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, like I, I just want more resilience. So I don't, I don't know if we're being as resilient. Like I sent out that video about, are you blooming? Like, like, are you growing during this time? Are you, is your brain developing during this time? Like it's, I, I just, I feel like we, I feel like as a community, we could definitely like increase that part, but I don't know how to do that. Me nagging is not working. <laughs> It's not your fault that they don't show up. It's their fault, you know. Like, but you get it's not, it's not, so you, you can't you can't be guilty for that one kid that doesn't show up. I know, but you give so much, and that you are trying, and you want so much. Like, I want so much for you, and when you don't take the things that help you, you know, help you prepare for those things, it's it's really hard. I. It, I, I'm not, I mean, every teacher I talk to, the, the, the hardest part is just not having complete buy-in. Um, and um, what if, I mean, like, what if this were to continue? Like, you can't just be uneducated. <laughs> like, you have to find ways. So we have to just find ways. But the community as a whole, like, we are just so blessed where we live. Um, you know, I have had to take like I started with the, you know, packing the food when we first started going with that, but then to keep up with AP bio and everything, I had to stop helping, but I'm starting back up this Friday. And I mean, like, there's just people that show up every single week and they're just like helping and trying to find a way to, to make a difference. Um, and I think that makes you able to get through this. I know me mas making masks just like all the time, like is helping me help others and so I think it helps people through the time so so I think our community is just amazing mm -hmm. and I'm I, I mean like I I worry about our community because we had so many people that were waiting to get back to work because it was winter time and and then they couldn't so I mean but I feel like there's yeah. a lot of help and support out there I mean like we're going to be opening up this Friday you know yeah and then people from Detroit are not going to be, I, do, do you think there's going to be a lot of people coming up? My daughter who lives in Detroit said, mom, you better get to the grocery store because there's not going to be any food. And I'm like, what do you mean? We're not going to be any food. She's like, every post, everybody I talk to, everybody like is like, we are heading to Northern Michigan. I'm like, but well, where are they going to stay? Like, there's no rentals. Like the, those kind of places can't be open. Are you going to drive up just so you can eat in a restaurant <laughs> at 50% capacity and then drive back home? Like, I don't know. So 
I'm going to go to the grocery store <laughs> just in case because I got you. a lot of mouths to feed. <laughs> um, so, yeah. I think it's harder um, if you know what's going on in places that are getting hit hard. Like I stopped watching the news as soon as my daughter went back to nursing. Um, and I should have stopped it before that. I just can't handle the news. Anyways, I've never watched the news. So I don't know why I thought that was a good idea for a while. But, um, but like knowing like what's going on in her world, like last night, just listening to her cry, you know, after work, it's just, it's just so we don't, we don't know up here. Like I, I feel like, I, and I'm like, that's pretty like opinionated, but mm -hmm. I just don't feel like we know it like other places know it. Um, so I don't want to know it. I don't want us to know it like other places know it. Um, but so hopefully we're not, I mean, we need to get back. Like we need to do things. We need, we do. our businesses need it so bad. Mm -hmm. Have you, on a little bit like on the softer side, have you learned any like new skills or anything besides over the past few months? Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, sorry. I hope that's not too loud. Um, so, I mean, obviously technology skills, like mm -hmm. I have a webcam on right now. Um, I like have been doing Zoom and Google Meet and, like, I, I just never realized, like, all the things that you would be able to do. So, yeah, so I have a lot of, lot of new skills that I've learned. Um, I hadn't sewn in a while, so my sewing skills are definitely <laughs> back up. Um, I am going to have a vegetable garden again, you know, so, so there's some really positive things. Um, mm -hmm. And I had just started to go through empty nest syndrome. And then I got two of my kids back, so I'm gonna have to go through it again. <laughs> so just having, I was, I've just been the happiest mom having kids here. So, um, so I'll have to go through that pain again. <laughs> but you just keep delaying it. You, you know, <laughs> every time you lose two kids, you get two kids back. <laughs> I know. First, I take in exchange students to try to cope. No, and then, and then my kids get back. But yeah. So, so yeah, definitely. Um, a lot of things. I've I've done so many webcasts and watching how tos and like so a lot of things like that. Have you joined everybody else in America? Have you made sourdough bread? No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that was a thing. It's a thing. I, I it's, it's, you know how the people like there's the toilet paper crisis now there's like the flower crisis <laughs> my kids are like into all healthy stuff so like they, they've been trying all these like healthy like desserts and healthy this and my husband's like more horse treats like <laughs> he's not <laughs> he's not a big fan <laughs> but so they've been like getting creative and doing different things <laughs> But I've been just too busy <laughs> to like try too many things new. Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully that will like calm down a little bit. Like I kind of feel like, I kind of feel like after AP Bio is done, like like all of our classes should just be done because <laughs> it's just we can stop now. <laughs> well, good for you that you took the AP exam and you get to stop <laughs> that class. <laughs> But my 10th graders and my 9th graders, they got to keep going because I need them in AP Bio eventually. And, I, and there's not enough time to teach what there is to teach. I don't need right. to teach all the other stuff, too. Um, so how do you just keep a positive attitude through all this? Um, luckily, that's like just me. Yeah. Um, I, I don't have to focus on that too much because I've just always... I've just always made that a mission to like just stay positive and always because you can find so many people that have it worse and that, that like so it's just I don't know it's just easy for me to like be a positive person but that doesn't mean that I haven't had moments where I just sit and ball like but I choose to for as much as possible like just find the positives but <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Mm -hmm. We were just talking about biology kids not falling off the, not falling off the, um, doing their work. <laughs> well, good thing that does not apply to me. <laughs> Hi, Kale. <laughs> well, I, how many questions do you have left? I'm supposed to be in a Google Classroom right now. Mm, oh, nothing really. Okay. Do you have anything else you want to talk about that we haven't discussed yet? I don't think so. I hope I did okay. Yeah, you did great. Anything <laughs> you want to tell the people that will watch this video in the future? Oh, like, hmm. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I hope um I hope that we don't go back to normal. Um I hope that like this really um makes us appreciate the things that maybe we've taken for granted, like the hugs and the gatherings and um instead of like complaining about having to make something for the potluck, family potluck, or, so I hope that we really learn to appreciate things more. Um, I hope, I really hope that we don't just go back to normal. So, um, yeah, I think I could go on about that forever. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, All right, well, you don't have anything else to say. Well, thank you for doing this. Yeah, thanks for asking me to.